Hi, this is Dan from Yukon HKN, and today we'll be doing a, an example video of unbalanced three-phase voltages and currents. So, normally in an ideal three-phase system, all of these loads would be equal. Unfortunately, in this problem, they're not, as you can see. So, our whole purpose here is to find the phasor voltage at this node, N, and then using that to find the currents down all three branches. So to start off, we're going to just do some simple conversions for our three um, branches. So I'll label them branch one, two, three. So for one, our voltage is just 120 volts because it's not phase shifted at all. So it's just 120 plus J zero. And our uh, impedance is 1, or is 0.5, 0 0.5, 16, so 17 plus J, uh, 9. For 2, after we do our conversion using R sine theta and R cosine theta, we get negative 60 minus J104 volts. And we get an impedance of 21 plus J11 ohms. And for our third, we have negative 60 plus J104 volts. And an impedance of negative 20 plus J of 20 plus J10. Now, something that I uh, that I like to note, the convention is usually to make this bottom one positive, but that's because positive 120 is the same as negative 240. Me personally, when I'm doing the problem myself, I usually write it as negative 240. But that's not the way most people do it. Same thing though. Um, so starting with uh, part A. To find the voltage here, the general idea is we're going to find the current and then multiplied by the sum of the resistances. So let's get started down here. We're going to have 120 volts and uh, divided by our load right there, 17 plus J9. I find that with these problems, if you do those conversions in the very beginning, it saves you a lot of time later on. Plus our next one, so negative 60 minus J104. Divided by our second impedance. And then our last one, negative 60 plus J104. And that last impedance. And now what we're going to do is multiply this entire sum by the sum of the resistances, or the impedances, sorry. So it'll be times all these sums, 17 plus J9, so when you do this out, you get a voltage of 6.8 plus J1.3. And then when we do our final uh, conversion to make this a phaser, where we use our uh, sine and cosine correlations, this turns into 6.9 volts at 11 degrees RMS. And so now, actually, the lion's share of our work is already done for us. 
with regards to Part B. So with regards to Part B, uh, this is no different from any other uh, nodal analysis you might do using Kirchhoff's current law. So it'll be, so for the top uh, loop, the top branch, it'll be this voltage minus that voltage over the impedance. So for part one, it'll just be 120 minus the quantity, 6.8 plus J1.3. all over that first impedance. And that gives us uh, 5.2 minus J 2.8 amps, which of course will convert to the phaser of 5.9 at negative 28 degrees. That's an ARMS. So second one, it's the same, same exact process where you just do the first voltage minus the second all over the impedance. So it'll be negative 60 minus J104. Minus the quantity of 6.8 plus J1.3. going to separate these off. And again, once you've done one phase, you pretty much know exactly how to do the rest. It's the same exact uh, method. So same as before, I'm just going to do our conversion back to polar at 5.3 at negative 151. And then our last one, no different from the first two. You can already see doing those is absolutely invaluable. Had I not done it uh, and I was doing this, say, for a homework problem, I would be wasting probably about 10 extra minutes that I don't need to do redoing these calculations or looking through my calculator history every single time I wanted to do these. So waste of your time not to do it. So to sum up, as you can see, these three currents are different, these three right here, because the three impedances are different. So this first part, likely representing the line model, these first three elements, are the same for all, but the loads are different causing the current to be different across each. So that's a very unideal situation. Um, so to just reiterate with what we did, to find our voltage, there were two ways we could have done it. I showed you guys this way, but another way we could have done this same problem would be this first part would have been the same, except instead of multiplying, we would be dividing by 1 over this plus one over this, plus one over that. Uh, it's the same method, really. It's just a little neater to do it this way. And then using that voltage we found, we found the current through each branch by subtracting here from here, those two voltages, and dividing by our, resi by our impedances, because as we know, V equals IR. Uh, that's really all there is to this video. Good luck on circuits one.